Shalom. I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakudash, the honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for ruling and teaching uh, well. Alright, this is the Brother Izar, and I'm out here in Cedar Park, Texas, Leander, you know, close to Austin. Um, I just wanted to go in Galatians 3 and 19. You know, I did a, a video the other day, you know, concerning uh, Galatians 3 and 16 through 18. All right, talking about the law, you know, and I was on a shortage of time. You know, Lord willing, I can finish it up today. So this is uh, Galatians 3 and 19. Wherefore serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. All right, so that's why the law was was. Uh, that's why the law is there. Why was Yahweh Shai perfect? All right, was he perfect because of the hair he had, or or maybe because of the way he walked? No, he was perfect because he followed the law. All right, to the perfection of the law, you know, <clears throat> and that's why. Apostle Paul says that Yahweh Shai freed us from the law, you know, because of the, uh, because Yahweh Shai uh, was killed even though he was perfect, you know, but what was the curse of the law? What, how did he free us from the law? You know, the curse of the law was that we can't complete the law, man, you know, us not being Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh Shai himself. We can't keep the law to the perfection. So it was a curse unto us, man. Because every time that we transgressed, all right, every time that we sinned, which sin is a transgression of the law, you know, every time we sinned, guess what happened to us? Destruction, man. We would be destroyed by Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, you know, because we, we would uh, transgress uh, the law, you know. And when you transgress one, you transgress all of them, man. You know? So you're a sinner. You see? So how did Yahweh Shai free us? Well, now our faith saves us. You know? It's not by by the law that we are saved. Alright? It's by the faith we have in Yahweh Shai. But that faith that we have in Yahweh Shai also, alright, is going to bring forth the keeping of the law. You see? So it just means that it's perfected, you know, through the faith. The law has been perfected through the faith, you know. That doesn't mean that the law was done away with. You know, it's written from the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. It's written throughout, man. Keep the laws, keep the commandments, you know. It's written throughout for a reason. It says... It was added because of transgressions. All right. So you did not know sin if it wasn't for the law. You know, does that mean that the law is wicked? God forbid. You know, but you would not have known sin if it wasn't for the law. Why? Because if you know what is righteous, all right, if you know it's righteous to... Um, not look at a woman Alright At a woman that's married If you know it's righteous To uh, You know Only want a woman That isn't married If you know that's righteous Alright That's good Then you know that Wanting a woman that's married Is bad Alright So the law is the one that helped us That's our schoolmaster Alright It says Um uh, it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, which was who? Yahweh Shai. All right. So we still kept the law, statutes, and commandments. And when Yahweh Shai came, we still have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. All right. But not to the extent that we used to. You know, we're still going to have to keep them. You know, but we keep it to the best of our ability. You know, not being willful. You know. 
just because Yahweh Shai came in the flesh doesn't mean that we have the allowance now of, of going out and, and transgressing the law whenever we please. You know, that's not what that means, man. It says, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. All right. So a mediator is is the mediator between two. All right. A covenant. All right. And that covenant, that second covenant is Yahweh Shai, you know. Which is in uh, Jeremiah 31 and 31. You see. And that's the new covenant that Yahweh had made with the uh, children of Israel, you know, which is through the blood of Yahweh Shai. So that's what, what um, Yahweh Shai came for, you know, a mediator of two, but not just of one. You know, it says, is the law then against the promise of the Most High? God forbid. You see, so the law is not against the promise that is going to come, man, which is Jeremiah 31 and 31. You know, the law is not against the promise, which is Yahweh Shai. It's not against that. You know, they go together. For there had been a law given which could have given life, verily the righteousness should have been by the law. You see? It says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach might be given to them that believe. So only those that actually believe in Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai are the ones that are going to be able to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. All right? keep the faith you know keep the structure be of one mind and one body only those people are the ones that are going to be able to uh fall under the order you know because that's the faith they carry man so it shows you right here that the that the law is not against it all right the law is for it man the law is with it you know with the promise but righteousness doesn't come just by the law, just by the keeping of the law. All right. That that would just be an empty vessel following, you know, more empty vessels, man. You know, you have to be filled on the inside first in order to, to fulfill the outside, you know. And when you fill the inside with the spirit, you fulfill the outside. All right. With with righteousness which is the law you know but you can't get it all by itself man faith without works is dead you see it says but before faith came we were kept under the law shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed you see so we were being practiced under the law and then when faith comes in all right, it fulfills the law. You see? And I know this this doesn't really make sense to too many people. All right, but like the brothers say, you know, whoever gets it, it's going to get it, man. Those that hear, all right, uh, uh, to salvation, those that hear and forbear to damnation, man. You know? So it says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed, you know? So does that mean we don't have to keep the Sabbaths anymore? Does that mean we don't have to keep the law? All right, because because it was destroyed? That No, man. You know, that's not what that means. This is uh, Matthew chapter 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not to come to destroy, but to fulfill. How did he fulfill it? Through the faith that we had in Yahweh Shai, that we have in Yahweh Shai. You see? Talking about the Old Testament. You know, people want to talk about the Old Testament like it's done away with. Oh, yeah, the laws, that's, that's done away with. The prophets, that's done away with. But Yahweh Shai tells you himself right here, man. 
all right? Think not that I am come to destroy the law, all right? To do away with it. He didn't do away with the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill, all right? Why did Shai come here for? For the salvation of Israel. You know what? Let me get that Jeremiah 31 and 31. You know, I've been making mention of it. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them up out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, after those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. You see? And that's in the kingdom of heaven. The law, statutes, and commandments are going to be written in our inward parts. That's why we're going to be made perfect. All right? Because we won't have the ability to sin. All right? And it's really a disability. You know? It's really a disability. When you sin, that's a disability, man. You know? So we're going to be made perfect in the kingdom of, of, of the Most High. You know? This is Acts 17 and 1. Now when they had passed through Am Amphipolis and Apol Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul as his manner was, went into them in three Sabbath days, reason with, with them out of the scriptures. All right. So if you know where Thessalonica is, all right, it's not, uh, you know, like, like it was, um, you know, these were Gentiles, you know, these were Gentiles that would go into the synagogues. Um, you also had Jews that would go into the synagogues. And they would plead the uh, apostles, all right, to come back the next Sabbath to teach them. You know? It says, And Paul, as his manner was, went into them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. All right, so it's mentioning Sabbath days, man, because guess what? They still kept the Sabbaths. All right. They still kept the laws. They still kept the statutes, you know, but for the Gentiles that were coming in, they wouldn't force them to keep it perfectly because they couldn't keep it perfectly, you know, and that's where that mercy comes in from Yahweh Shai because nobody can keep the law perfect. That's where Yahweh Shai comes in to fulfill the rest, man, through faith, you know. So it says, um, let me get, what was another one? Oh, this one's a popular one. Romans 10 and 4 it says, For Mashiach is the very end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. All right, so they use this and say, see, the end of the law. That's it. That's the end. We don't have to keep it anymore. All right, but when you go into that word end, Uh, let me see where is it at telos all right telos doesn't mean end all right primary from a primary tello to set out for a def definite point or goal you see so yahweh shai was the goal of the law man not the termination not the end all right eternal would be much better the end to which all things relate to aim purpose all right it's not the end of the law all right so it says strong's definition telos from a primary tello to set out for a definite point or a goal all right so the goal of the law was yahweh shai hamashiach you see did he not say he was going to fulfill the law so he is the goal of the law man so if you follow Yahweh Shai, guess what you have to follow? The law, statutes, and commandments. You know? So this is, um, 
1 Corinthians, and I think it was 5. Mm. I'll start off at verse 1. It says, it is reported commonly in the in the uh, Corinthians, all right, the book of Corinthians was way after Yahweh Shai, all right? I believe it was 30 years after Yahweh Shai, you know? It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Now, what is fornication? All right, let's go into that. Fornication, porneia, all right, which goes to the word pornos, all right, which goes to the uh, adultery, all right, when you see a woman uh, having sex, when you see a woman being taken by a man, all right, that's what fornication, that's what adultery is, man. When you see homosexuality, lesbianism, all right, intercourse with animals, all right, that's unclean. That's where that word uh, porn comes from, you know, porneia. You see, it also can be a metaphor to worship idols, you know. So what is that? What is adultery? You know, let me get it over here. Uh, what was that? First Corinthians six and nine, was it? Yeah, I'll get this one after. Uh, it says, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. All right. And that's against the law. All right, because in the book of the law, you're not supposed to marry um, your mother, all right, which means have sex with her. You're not supposed to marry your sister, all right, or your parents' close relatives, or your father, or your stepmother, or your stepfather, you know. It gives you uh, uh, instructions, man, how to carry yourself, all right. So, yes, we keep the law. We established the law. Hey, that's a good one, too. You know, we established the law. And that's what scripture says. You know? It says um, that one should have his father's wife, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed in the name of our lord yahweh shai hamashiach when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of the lord yahweh shai hamashiach to deliver such as one unto satan for the destruction of the flesh all right for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of yahweh shai hamashiach you see so we're looking for spiritual men you know, it says your glory is not good. And what is good? Yahweh the most high. What did he give us? The law. You know, it says, know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You see, purge out therefore the old leaven. All right. The old man put away the old man that ye may be a new lump as ye were unleavened. You see. So like Yahweh I said, unless you be born again, all right, you can't come into the kingdom, man. You know, you can't come into the kingdom. For even Mashiach, our Passover is sacrificed for us. You see that? Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You see, that's what Yahweh Yahweh is looking for, man. He's not looking for sinners. All right. That's another one. Um, which one was I going to get? Uh, establish the law. Let me see. Romans 3 and 31. It says. Uh, let me see. Verse 30. Uh, no, let me start off at 27. Romans 3 and 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, 
but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. All right, so does that mean you don't have to keep the law? No. All right, but we're justified by the faith, you know, without even the deeds of the law. That's why we came into this truth. We weren't all keeping the laws, the Sabbaths, and, and the Passovers, you know? We weren't doing what we were supposed to be doing. You see? But we had faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And he chose us out of this world. All right, Lord willing, we stay that way. You know, Lord willing, we stay uh, as hopeful as we can. You know, to make up the number of the hopeful elect. Lord willing, I'm part of that number. You know? But it wasn't because we were keeping the, the law, statutes, and commandments that we came into this faith. You see? But after we had faith and we grew, all right, the Most High increased us, like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, as the Most High increased us in this faith, all right, we also increased in deed. Because like uh, Peter says, all right, um, faith without works is dead, you know? So you have to have faith, man. You have to have works, you see? But when we were brought into this truth, we didn't have works. All we had was faith. And that's what rescued us. You see, it says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. All right. So we didn't have to keep the law, statutes and commandments from the beginning in order to come into the faith of the Lord. It's backwards, man. We have to have the faith in our Lord. And then the deeds of the law can come into play. You know, it says, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not the also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. All right. So he's the God of Israel, but also, all right. Also, he's the God of everything, you know, because the most high is the most powerful uh, being in the whole entire galaxy, the whole entire universe. You know, he created everything. He exists outside of time. It says, seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? All right. So this is the big question that people want to ask. The law is done away with, right? Well, here you have Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Let's look up that word establish. All right, because this law is not done away with, man. And that's something that Volcat Malone and these other Christians want to bring out. To cause or make to stand, to place, to put, to sit, to bid, to stand by. We stand by the law, man. You know? And that's all we're saying. We're not saying you have to keep the law to the perfection. All right? Because nobody can. If you could, then you would be Yahweh Shai. You know? So nobody can actually keep the law to the perfection, man. You know, and we know that. We know that we can't keep it to the perfection. You see? But it is established, man. All right? Faith brought us into this truth. Through faith, all right, we increased in the truth. And in the truth, we kept the law, statutes, and commandments, and we rehearsed the righteous acts, man. You know, they go hand in hand, they go together. So let me get this one, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Who are the unrighteous? All right, let me actually get it over here. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous, adekos, which is unjust, sinful, wicked and immoral committing or characterized by the committing of sins all right so let's go to first first john three and two beloved 
Now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that we shall be, uh, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. All right. How was Yahweh Shai pure? All right. He was perfect in the ways of the Lord, man. He was perfect in the law. So when you're trying to perfect yourself, you're cleansing yourself. All right. You're making yourself pure. Whosoever committeth sin. All right. Verse four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. You see? Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Why? Because you're going to try and keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You see? It says, uh, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. You see? Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. You see? So why do you call us wicked, man? Like Job said, uh, what was it, Job 6? I think it was Job 6. I can't remember, but he said, uh, Wherefore calleth thou me wicked? All right. Let's see. I'll get to it. All right. But that adekos, all right, means sinful. All right. So know ye not that the unrighteous, the sinful, shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? And what is sin? Transgression of the law. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, all right, you effeminate men, nor abusers of, the, of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. You see, so sinners are not going to inherit the kingdom of the Most High, man. Because the elect are going to be justified by the faith in their works. All right? They're going to be justified by the righteousness that they brought forth. You see? Uh, let me see. Uh, what did Joe for? Labor in vain. Man, where was that one at? Wicked. I can't remember where it's at. Let me see if I can fire my sword real quick. Give me one second. Bear with me. I be wicked that's what it was if I be wicked yep yep Job 9 and 29 if I be wicked why then labor I in vain all right so if if the elder apostles all right uh, uh, the elders of great millstone all right if the brothers of great millstone if they're wicked why are they laboring for wickedness, all right, to cease? Why are we laboring for Yahweh Shai to come back? Why are we laboring, all right, for the wickedness of the world to be destroyed? If we're wicked, all right, if we're wicked, why are we putting so much work into, you know, salvation? You know? If we're not gaining out of going out to the highways and byways, all right, because people think we look like idiots, all right, then, then what are we really gaining? Ask yourself that, man. You have these other groups, 
All right. And if you ask the same question, you know, in, in their perspective, you have these other groups that are making money off of this truth, man. When scriptures tell you not to make money off of this truth, you know, not to monetize the truth, man. Because that's a wicked thing. You know, and all they care about is money. They don't care about the truth. You know, like General Yohanna. He doesn't care about this truth, man. He just wants to get his money. He just tries to look cool and get his money. You know, that's all he does it for. Elder Apostle Tahar, you never see him out there being all flashy. You know, he wears his jeans, some sneakers, a shirt, a regular shirt, his garments, and he goes out and he talks, man, and he preaches. Same thing with the rest of the brothers, man. You know? We don't go out there with some, you know, really pretty garments and 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 try to, you know, speak and, 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 and get people to follow us just so we can get money. We don't do that, man. We do it for the necessity of preaching, for the necessity of, of, of uh, the most highest words going out. Because he speaks through his men. You see? Verse 30, if I wash myself with snow water and make my hands never so clean yet shalt thou plunge me into the ditch and mine own clothes shall abhor me you see because nobody likes a prophet man nobody has ever liked a prophet this is a uh, first Ezra, and i'm actually going to finish it here you know i'm about to go out to camp first Ezra, um what was it one in 51 This is 1 Ezra chapter 1, verse 51. But they had his messengers in derision. All right. And that word derision there means to make fun of, to mock, to scoff, point fingers. And that's what they've always done to the messengers. They've always had him in derision. And look what the Lord spake unto them, that they made a sport of his prophets. All right. You have these dudes out here making fun of the prophets, man. Vocab Malone, you know, he goes out there and he even tries to dress like us and, and he talk, tries to talk like us just to make a sport of it, man, to make fun of the prophets. That which was is to be, all right? So whatever happened in the past is going to happen again, you know? Like the elders brought up the, the thing about King Masha, all right, being King David, you know, which is something that we have to believe in. Because King David is supposed to be part of our ranks. You know? And King Masha passed away. You know, being cold. You see? And so did King David, man. You know? Uh, uh, Abba Bivens, we believe to be Elijah. All right? Elijah came back as John the, the Baptist. And, and, and he also came back as Abba Bivens. You know? And one of the things that Abba Bivens used to do was eat locust, you know? And like Elder Apostle Tahar said, man, these are things that you got to say, hmm, you know, you really got to look at those things like, well, what, what's going on? There's no coincidences, man. You know, there's no coincidences. Why the Issacharites eat a uh, 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 locust? Because it's lawful, you know? But it says, um, so far forth, 52, all right, first Ezra, uh, uh, chapter one, verse 52, so far forth that he being wroth with his people for their great ungodliness commanded the Kings of the Chaldeans to come up against him. All right. Who slew their young men with the sword, yea, even with the compass of their holy temple. And spared neither young man nor maid, old man nor child among them, for he delivered all into their hands. So where was the love there, man? If the Most High loves everybody, all right, if he loves every single person and every single soul in this earth, that he wouldn't ever do anything wrong to him. Why are bad things still happening, you know, in the earth? Why do scriptures talk about the death of that came to children, that came to women, that you would call innocent, you know? 
but you have no knowledge, man. The Most High is righteous above all. You know? So if you're against the Most High, if you're against Yahweh Shai, if you're against his laws, if you're against his statutes, his commandments, if you're against his order, all right, which falls under the order of Elder Apostle Tahar at Great Millstone on down, if you're against that order, man, if you make ridicule of his prophets, then what you're going to see is death and not salvation. I hope that was edifying. And with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom.